folks, and, and welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we have the wonderful Gina Stradley. You uh, know her as a entrepreneur of hospitality and food and beverage, along with Jim here in Wilson County, but also from Davidson County originally. So how are you, Miss Gina? I'm good. I'm good. Fantastic. I, I, I'm great. So I, I'm going to just jump in here and ask you, what motivates you? What gets you up in the morning? What makes you excited now? You've got a lot of things going on, but what what are you excited about right now? Right now, well, right now and every day, just every day is different. Every day in my business, every day is a new day. Every day is different in this business. The with the catering and the events and the and the things that we have to do, not every day is the same. And that's what makes it fun. So you thrive on that. You thrive yeah. on. Mm -hmm. I do. We do. Mm -hmm. You'd have to, because every day is different. There is a challenge. Every, when you hang up from this call, you, you will actually have to address something. I'm sure you will, right? You'd... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've got and to... it's not always what you think it is. You know, like I was just telling someone today, I, I said, I woke up and I said, oh, today's going to be an easy day. I'm going to have a good, easy day. And just when you think it's an easy day, it's not an easy day. So Look over your shoulder, right? Go, oh, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Well, you guys have been in the food and beverage industry for, for isn't that how you met, Jim? And you you guys it are is. both? It yeah. is. Um, it is. I was um, 18 and he was 30 and he was my manager. And uh, I chased him and he'll tell you that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't stand a chance. Is that what you're no, telling? Me? No, he didn't. He didn't. So, yeah. <laughs> so one time you you uh, told me that you were a dancer. Is that true? Is he, what, true. Yeah. What can you explain that? Flesh that out a little bit. Well, it's. I was three years old when I started Dang. ballet, tap, and jazz, dance recitals, the whole bit, and. Uh, I've done it almost uh, my entire life. Uh, stopped doing it for a little while in high school, but uh, picked it back up. And uh, I still do it now. I, have, I do adult tap and jazz at Diamond Academy of Dance in Mount Juliet every Monday. And afterwards, there's wine involved, but um, it's always fun. <laughs> and we do recital in June, get all dressed up in our costumes. And, it, and it's really fun. But um yeah. So I had some, you know, when I met my husband, had on some really good shorts and some really nice legs. And he said that was that was really hard to, to resist. So. That, that was the hooky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will have to. I'll, well, I want to get Jim's side of the story at some point. We'll get him on. He'll tell you that's the side of the story. But yeah, <laughs> you will. You will. <laughs> so tell me about what is jazz dancing? I know what tap dancing is. That that's fairly self-explanatory. What is jazz dancing? And do you have a partner? Do you have a favorite partner that you, or do you have to have a partner? To no, jazz? not in jazz. No, you no. don't. It's, it's, I don't know. No one's ever asked me that before, but it's, uh, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's not, it's just more like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's not tap. It's not ballet, but it's, it's kind of salsa, hip swinging. Kind well, of. yeah, I mean, it's not. There's no partner involved. It's just <laughs> jazz dance. It's not like jazz music, but it's. Okay. I don't know. I'll we'll have to. Yeah. This but, year, this year's number. It's fun. It's to um, "New Attitude" by Patti LaBelle, and our costumes are very '80s aerobic style costumes and. Oh, okay. that'd be fun. That's really neat. <laughs> who who yeah. was the one that started that whole thing? Farrah Fawcett was that her? Was it did did some sort of an eighties, seventies, eighties thing? Maybe um, Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. <laughs> That's Farrah it. Fawcett. Well, so, Olivia okay. Newton-John, that kind of thing. I do understand that. So, so this is a production. So so there's multiple dancers on stage doing a production. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. not just your all get together and jazz dance on the floor. Right, right. It takes me a while sometimes. Right? I'll show you a video <laughs> sometime. When you... I, I'll actually go to YouTube when I get done here, and I want to look up jazz dance, and I would like to see what you guys are doing and when your production is. Maybe maybe Donna and I'll have to come and, and check okay. it out. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. I might, send, uh, I might see if I can find one and send it to you. The only problem is it's like taken from audience members way off stage. Yeah. And, 
stuff. I think one of our numbers was, uh, and this was really cute. We did nine to five by Dolly Parton and we oh, had cases and dresses and that was really cute. And then there's only four of us in the class right now. So, and we're, we range in age from 35 to seven above 70. So. Well, that's really good. Um, I dated a dancer a long time ago. She was in marvelous shape. I mean, she was toned and tight and just, I mean, uh, astonishingly, uh, uh, she had lungs the size of, you know, the Atlantic or something. It was amazing. So that must be one of the advantages then that you are healthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of muscle memory involved, too. So even when I didn't do it for a little while, when I pick it right back up, it's it's there. So And that was something I didn't have to worry about my entire life was being in shape. I could eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And it's that. Kind of thing. I know that <laughs> that's was, a reward. And it's was always good. Right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so you, uh, you started, I, I, I believe now help me with this. You started Jim and you together. You started a, a restaurant. Your first restaurant was on music row. Is that right? No. Well, actually no. we started as a catering company. Okay. Um, we both worked for, um, a company, uh, Paul, well, the name of the company, I don't really remember, but it was a restaurant company that had a catering company. Um, it was associated with Arthur's and Walter. Oh, Walter wow, that goes back. And Arthur's, um, a high-end restaurant. Yeah. And he started a catering company. And his first catering job was for Princess Anne when she came in for a royal chase, for a, a horse race. And it, it ironically, um, they were talking about doing this horse race, and it was about a year out. What no, it, we had planned our wedding on October 24th, 1987. And we planned it a year out. And six months into it, Jim's working with Walter and they get together and they have this visions of grandeur and they're going to do this horse race and um, Crown Royal is going to underwrite it and they're going to get Princess Anne to come in and do this race. And they're going to do it on October 24th, 1987, or the 23rd or something the day before. And Jim's like, no way, you know, no way is this going to happen. Well, sure enough. Um, so he's had to work this whole thing for days before the wedding and did this whole race and the princess came in and, and stuff. And then, you know, four or five days of this massive production of catering, first catering job they ever did. And, uh, then he got me the next day, went to the rehearsal and got married the next day. So then we had to follow that with that. Um, then we ended up going out on our own, started our own company. In the first year, we had a business, a baby, and bought a house. That's <laughs> we went out and did it all at the same time. And, That's um, ambitious. That was, that was two years after that. Um, and uh, just been going strong ever since. And uh, had a pretty strong catering company. We catered... Uh, the at uh, Vanderbilt Stadium Club for all the games. That was one of our first contracts. The Broadway Dinner Train was one of our first contracts. They still do that. Do they still have the Broadway Dinner Train? No, I don't think so. Oh, it was fun. But um, and then catering, it didn't get so hard, but it was hard to keep employees. So having a restaurant helped to keep employees. So that we ended up starting this small little restaurant off Massman Drive called Around the Corner. And it was just this diner little thing, but it helped us keep staff. And it was inside this massive warehouse that housed the Nashville Seafood Company. Um, and then like a month later, they went out of business. So we were this tiny little place in this massive warehouse and we were catering out of that and have this and then um, we started acquiring food service contracts, like at the athletic club in Maryland Farms in Brentwood. And we did their banquet rooms and stuff and then, then Ravenwood and things like that. And, and then we got into freestanding restaurants, one of them being um, Sammy B's on Music Row when we started that. And other ones, One there was one in Hendersonville. And in the meantime, we're still doing the servicing the club's and stuff. At one point, we had upwards of 200 employees. Wow. Yeah. And then wow. kind of. <laughs> Who did the scheduling for that? Yeah, we had we had staff and management <laughs> and hierarchy. And then it got to a point where Jim said, 
if you're not running it yourself, you might as well stand on a street corner and hand out $5 bills because it goes that fast. And so we just, it took years to just kind of bring it back down to small. Then we, we moved to Wilson County about 25 years ago, raised our family here. Our boys were in third grade and first grade and uh, raised them on a farm in Wilson County. And we still had Sammy's on Music Row. We did the food at Ravenwood Club, did the food at the Lebanon Golf and Country Club. And Jim was working with Danny Evans at Rademakers. Wow, Rademakers, yeah. And uh, they took that over. And that's why we moved to Wilson County. And uh, then we evolved into just really having the country club. Jim parted with Danny at Rademakers and we just had, I think, the country club at that time. And then when we Did didn't have that, anymore, when our lease was up from that, we reopened Sammy's at the mill. Yes. And that didn't work very well. And then the Rademakers building came available. So now we f- ironically find ourselves as Sammy B's in a three-story old building, um, just like we started 20 years ago on Music Row. It's kind of weird, <laughs> but... <laughs> at the same time that's an evolution that mm-hmm. is an astonishing yeah. evolution yeah yep. well that's uh i was thinking earlier i've been making some notes and i i said fed uh fed all of wilson county and most of davidson mm-hmm. <laughs> at some point you, you and williamson, we and williamson. williamson. I'm, I'm gonna make a note on that. williamson county yeah. too yeah. <laughs> We've been there and done that. Right <laughs> what are your plans for the future? You got, you're just going to maintain? or Well, you got- we were going to retire, but ah. that flew out the window when we bought the building. We bought the building at 705 Cadet Court last year. So um, we that was when our retirement went out the window. So um, we're just going to keep doing that for a little while, see where that goes. Would you do well in retirement, though? I mean, no. What- no, no, man. You think so for a minute. And then I think, what was it? We had a snow day a few months ago, just one. And Jim went, oh, no, I can't do this. No, no. <laughs> we could retire if we won them $1.5 billion and do stuff. But Jim said, I can't Let's retire. buy a building. Yeah, Let's just buy the building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can't retire. Jim, if, if we go on vacation, he wants to start another business. You know, if he sits there in a chair for too long, he's already, you know, got ideas to start another thing. So, you know. Fun. Well, you guys are certainly well matched. Well yeah. matched. You chose well <laughs> yeah. those many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I've lost count at this point, but I have. We fill each other's voids. And that's what good couples do, and you and you do it well. It's yeah. fun to see you guys together. Jim's getting a little more social. I see him more and more out, and he's fun. He is fun when he yes. when he gets. He's good. He's good at social, but he likes to he likes to be himself too because he he gets up so early and mm-hmm. he really does a lot of stuff, you know. But then by two o'clock in the afternoon, he's done. He's ready to be home. And done, and he still works. It's still his mind works twenty four seven. And then, if the phone rings or whatever. Well, I know um, you mentioned your sons, but you haven't mentioned your grandson. <laughs> <He's the mom. laughs> he is so great. Um, the latest on Booker is uh, I don't put him on the socials too often because he's not mine to put on the socials, and his right. parents don't put him out there too much, you know, sure. they're not a social. So um, just my close knit circle when I'm around them and get to see him. And um, he's almost one. He'll be one in June. And I babysit him on Tuesdays. And the other day on Tuesday, we were, I was trying to teach him how a cow goes, what a <laughs> cow says. And the little book says moo, but it doesn't say moo. It says like, like that and it sounds like a cow in distress and i have booker on video and like 15 times he says booker (laughs) says it like that that's a cow but it sounds just like the cow in the book and (laughs) in his face he just goes 
Uh, like it is hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I bought him this little chair to sit in. It was hard to find one because he's really not walking yet. He's crawling. So he can't really walk and sit, but it's a fluffy chair and he's eating a snack and he chose him eating a snack. And then he's like leaning and then he's got his foot up. And then the last picture, he's like lounging, laying back with his head on the chair and stuff. It's, it's a progression. But Oh, it's just every Tuesday I get to see a. It's not like being there daily and seeing the growth. It's seeing the weekly growth. I think every Tuesday he's he's just great. I, we should have went straight to grandkids, you know. <laughs> she skipped the sun <laughs> part. Yeah, straight straight to grandkids. To grandkids. Yeah. yeah. Well, your face does light up when Booker's name or his, his thought of him comes up. So you. Uh, you have the biggest smile right now on your face. That he's it, cute. The kids are good too. Good. I wouldn't trade them, but you'll, you'll accept them. They're yeah. okay. Yeah, they're pretty good. Well, are they in the food and beverage industry? Do they do that also? No, um, sort of. One of them, sort of. The other one is as far away from it as they can get. Us. Uh, Booker's dad, Sam, is the youngest. He, he is thirty-two, and um, he is in the medical industry. He. He uh, does medical research. He His degree is in research, sort of. He's got his master's degree from Johns Hopkins in regulatory science. And he works from his bedroom with a team of people that, the best way to say it, it he works for a large pharmaceutical company, but they develop ways to help hospitals um, make it better for patients, if that makes sense, I guess, you know, you know, doctors aren't real good at communicating with patients. And, and right. so their team just does things like that. And um, makes the patient experience better. I think so. And the communication okay. and, and yeah. things like that. So um, he does that currently. He um, he's published in two medical journals. He worked for three or four years with a cardiologist, wow. Dr. Weiss in, at um, Johns Hopkins. And um, so just about as far away from the medic, uh, the food industry as you can be. He, he worked for us for a very long time in it, but now he does that. And um, Reese, our oldest son, he is three years older than Sam. He is a DJ downtown Nashville and he DJs dance music at Friends in Low Places, Garth's Place, and at Whiskey Row, Dirk Bentley's Place. And he DJs their rooftops and their dance floors. And he works three, four days a week, um, prime time. They're Saturday nights from 10 to 2. Um, and he draws a really good crowd. He also works for... I don't know the name of the company, but he DJed with Dave Grohl at Super Bowl two years ago. He's asked to do things like that. Yeah. Wow. No, he, he does some really nice stuff. He's not like the DJ you call to do your wedding or anything. He he does um really good, makes a really good living doing that. So it's hard to say, hey, son, uh, you know, you want to come work for us? I can only pay you this much. And he's making like four times that working three days a week down there and enjoying it and enjoying that that thing but um jokingly and i don't know how far this podcast is gonna go but we have the two children and i i jokingly say um we have one son that regulates the drugs and the other one that grows them in the backyard so <laughs> we raised two completely different <laughs> children that are very successful at what they do but their personalities well. completely different <laughs> <laughs> both ends of the spectrum there right yeah. Correct. But they both are very smart and they both really know this business in and out. And I think it's because they were raised in it from the moment they were born. And right. um, we didn't hide it from them when we had dinner as a family. We, you know, they heard the discussions. They heard what it's like to own a business and, and the decisions that had to be made and the things that had to be done. So um, Reese, the oldest one, especially, he helps with decision making and things like that and consulting and especially that he's downtown and he has a lot of friends in the business uh you know he gives they give us pointers because they're you know in the younger crowd and you know, sure and so well, they're down there uh where all the new things are happening the mm -hmm. trends are happening the the the, the neat the now people the in the know people are and right. 
and you benefit from that uh, direct link, right? To that social environment that well, pretty much that was you though at one point, right? You were yeah. the in crowd downtown. It would and, be fun. It would. I, we look at Nashville now and and think, sure. oh gosh, you know, wow. ten years ago, it was nothing like that, and I couldn't do it now. But <laughs> yeah, I could do it if I were younger. <laughs> yeah. That that would be fun for a while, but. But you know what Reese does now, and he's not that young anymore, but he he goes in parks, goes up, does a job, goes back down, gets in his car and leaves. He doesn't really stay and part, you know, he's he's, he's getting a little tired of, you know, it, the hours, you know, he gets, he's living in Lebanon right now. So the drive home at four in the morning is just like, oh, but it's hard to pass up that money. <laughs> it it would be. It would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it is a young man's game in my mind. I I was in food and beverage for a long time myself when I came to town. And uh, yeah, it's so far back that the only business on 2nd Avenue at one time was an oyster bar that two gay chicks had. And it was mm-hmm. perfect for all the food and beverage people because we all got off and we'd all end up down there having a great time. And it was the only game in town, you know, that was a, a cool place to go. And then now you go down there and it's just, it's mind boggling. And it changes every day, Gina, every day yeah. there's a new restaurant down there. You, I can insane. get to them before they close sometimes. You know? it's insane. What's funny is sometimes to see the new things that are in and they're things that we did 30 years ago. Oh, that's 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 the new thing huh you know that's what would that be what do you I, I don't recall off the top of my head but some things right. that were like yeah, oh, like, yeah okay yeah, that's, yeah. Hey, yeah they got cool. this new thing that you know yeah. well, that's not new we did that 30 years you know we did that before you were born son just yeah. gonna say it before you were born we were well, my kids know but just it's funny it's just kind of funny you know, you did bring up the uh the knowledge absorption of your children and uh my daughter Isabella uh, has listened to Don and I talk business since the day she was born. We that you just that's what happens because you need to talk about your business, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so once in a while she'll speak up and we'll be like, you, "You've been like you've been listening." Mm-hmm. So it comes as a surprise almost. I think she could run a business, right? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and understand the the multitude of issues that you you face every day. And, uh, well, it's funny, not even only in business, but just in life and the way you conduct your life um, reminds me of one thing that my son and they were right just fresh in college or right out of high school. And he and his girlfriend they had to go to a wedding. And his girlfriend is the one that told me this. She was trying on dresses and he said, no, so and so this is not a dress you pull over your head. This is a dress that zips up in the back. And I was like, this came from my son. <laughs> Where did you even? <laughs> he yeah. was absolutely correct in that. Right. But I thought, no, you know, this is not. No. That, that's a great description of the kind of dress she needed for that event. But <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I'm I, thinking Gina said that once or twice. <laughs> he picked up on it. This is. <laughs> I went, that's perfect. That's funny. You got to watch what you say. <laughs> you you do. <laughs> and also, if, I mean, she hears things on the third floor of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that? <laughs> it's like, how could you possibly hear that? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, well, I know that your your sons and your grandson is, is the... the a big part, a focal point of your life. And they bring you joy and, and, and our children should do that. And yeah. it, it's really exciting to see how happy you and excited you get about them and Booker in particular. I haven't met him yet. So I'm going to have to impose on you at some point and come over and see yeah, him. Yeah. You know, he's, on a well, Tuesday. you know, and, and you have a girl, I have boys and now I have a grandson and they're one word answer children. Boys are, I don't know how Isabella <laughs> was, but no, I think you can look back on, I was looking back on a text message with one of them the other day and it was one word answer from them. And to this day they are. So 
you know, you've seen them almost as much as I see them at this point. They, it's just pulling teeth to see boys and to get answers and things out of boys. So yeah. definitely I need to get them here to see my friends, but it's like, oh, you know, I think um, I'm going to get to watch him for three or four days. They're going out of town. So I get to keep him at the Ooh. end of June. So I'm, I'll be showing him off then for quite some time. So excited <laughs> about that. I look forward to it. Oh, uh, well, Gina, thank you so much. That's all the time we have for today. I really enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed it too. You're welcome. I have. I have. Thanks for asking me. This is great. This is great. Well, maybe we'll 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 do it again sometime. We'll flesh this out and pick another topic and just have some have some fun. Yeah, we'll have to get Jim involved. That would be great. That would be excellent. Just maybe him by himself so we can kind of corroborate the story oh, yeah. here. Like you the know. dating game, like that, not the dating game, the newlywed game. See if yes. our answers correlate. Jim, what did you, what did Gina do in this situation? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you folks for joining in. Uh, always remember if you get lost in uh, when you're diving or in life, always remember that it's bubbles up. Have a good day.